Proper travel documentation is the cornerstone of going on a cruise. You mess up travel documentation, you aren't going anywhere. And I tell you what, there's some wacky stuff in the United States that you can cruise without a passport. In the United States, they let you cruise with a birth certificate and a photo ID, but man, there's some gotchas. Today, I wanna talk about cruising with a birth certificate and some things you might not have thought about. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the La Lita Loca Cruise Show. I'm your host, Tony B. I'm your guide today into that cruise life. If you enjoy cruising, consider subscribing to the channel with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of our episodes. So yes, it's wacky. Most countries in the world require a passport to travel to a foreign land, but not so in the United States. Look, it's a big country. It's a lot of states. There's a lot of people out there. We don't necessarily travel outside the United States. And so they got to make it easy to get you down to the Caribbean. Well, one way that they've done that is they have this closed loop travel policy. And here is how the closed loop travel policy works. The government says, hey, American cruiser, if you would like to cruise down to the Caribbean and you want to leave a certain U.S. city, if you leave that U.S. city and you go to a foreign island, a Caribbean island that doesn't require a passport, as long as you return back to that same U.S. city, you don't need a passport. You can just take your birth certificate and your state issued ID. That covers a lot of the Caribbean islands. There's only a couple down there that require a passport. And so if you don't have a passport and you wanna go on a cruise and you got your birth certificate and your state issued ID, you can go down to a city like Miami and you can go on a cruise. Now, the, again, the catch here is you have to return to the same city. So anytime you're looking for a cruise that you can do with only your birth certificate, the cruise has to start and end in the same city. You can't go from Miami and end up in Los Angeles. You'd need a passport for that. Hope that makes sense on the closed loop travel. Well, here's the deal. Uh, traveling with a birth certificate, pretty straightforward. You gotta have, uh, for most cruise lines, you gotta have an official birth certificate that has a raised seal. There's some cruise lines that will take a copy. I believe that Carnival will take a good copy of your birth certificate. But for the most part, you gotta have that birth certificate with the raised seal, and you have to have a state-issued photo ID. And here's the kicker. Your name has to match on both. You might have a birth certificate that has one name, and a state issued ID that has another name. I'm thinking about women who have taken the last name of their husband when they got married. These name mismatches, they matter. And you're starting to see more and more cruise lines trying to verify these things. If your birth certificate says one name, your state issued ID says another name, you're going to need some sort of additional piece of documentation to draw the line between those mismatched names. And so if it's a married woman, think marriage certificate, that kind of thing. And look, this doesn't just affect the adults. Kids travel traveling on cruises, they can travel with their birth certificate. They don't need to have a passport in the same way, but it gets a little more tricky with kids, especially in a day and age where parents aren't always together. You might have kids that have one last name and parents that have another last name. It is in that circumstance that you're gonna need some additional documentation. One of the main pieces of documentation relating to minors that are traveling is a letter of consent. And this usually has to be provided by the parent that is not traveling. So if you are a divorced person and you're taking your kids on a cruise, the other parent has to consent for the kids to leave the country. Now there's going to be circumstances where that person's not around anymore. It could be a situation where the other parent is deceased or where the person's a deadbeat and they're never in the lives of their kids. And it could be a challenge to get this letter of consent signed and notarized. You want to take as much documentation as possible. You want to take divorce decrees if it's the situation of the deceased, you want to take a death certificate. If you're the person with sole uh, custody because the person is bugged out on you, make sure that you take your divorce papers and show that you have sole custody. And this could be true for grandparents also. You want a letter of consent from the parents of the child that it's okay to travel with the child. And you may run into people that say, look, I've had no trouble at all. My birth certificate doesn't match my state issued ID and it's been no big deal. But again, nothing's a problem until it is a problem problem and the easiest way to mitigate those risks is to have all the documentation that you need 
prior to your cruise. So start planning now. There could be some birth certificate gotchas. Now, I always advocate traveling with a passport. It's not that much if you break it down on a per year price. But look, if you want a better explanation of that, check out this video where I talk more about passports. This is Tony for the La Lita Loca Cruise Show. Thank you for stopping by today. Hit the like button. And until the next video, I'll see you on the Lido. Bye.